From the oldest known civilizations of the then Persia to the 21st century, we've existed in a world where anything can change. In time, throughout many generations of different cultures and civilizations, have believed death not to be the final chapter of life, but simply a passage to a new existence. My name is Don Phillips. I know the truth. With the spirits, we share the truth. We are the truth. And this is Veritas. Hi guys, welcome back. This is once again Don Phillips. Um, I'm not in the workshop this evening. That's kind of pretty much dismantled because I am still waiting to move. So at the moment, I'm in the corner of my kitchen. Fortunately, it's quite a decent size, so we can just about pull it off. Um, a few things I want to cover tonight or this morning. Um, it's now quarter to three. As you know, I've just uploaded the video, which I'm sure you've seen, if not, I suggest you do, the um, Haunting the Journey, where I visited the Arboretum in Leicester. Tonight, I'm going to be replaying some recordings over a good quality speaker, some recordings also that weren't included in the footage, uh, primarily because if I'd have put everything in the footage, it would have been probably over two hours long, so that's a very cut down version, obviously. So it's now getting on for, what, a week since I'm actually at the Arboretum. Um, since then I've been aware of some very strong spirit personalities around me. Um, I've told them, of, of course, my home is their home. Um, make themselves comfortable and I'm going to get to know each one on an individual basis. That will begin tonight. Uh, topics that I, I'm planning on covering are the time stream. You may have heard about the time stream in the mentioned in the Skull experiment, but I feel that was actually a missed opportunity because while I was actually talking to the spirit team or the spirit on the radio who was coming through loud and clear, the questions like this should have been raised then. Human consciousness. Marcelo Bashi and finally a little note on there Catherine Finch a very nice lady from the cemetery some of the coins I will be playing will be what we're actually taking today so I think we should start by introducing you to my new friends first of all oh and Elizabeth she's obviously a prominent figure she's the lady that was having difficulties at the cemetery who actually helped so first of all let's as I said, introduce you to our friends. Catherine, Elizabeth, are either of you here at the moment? Thank you. Fantastic. Catherine. Right, let's get back to this again. Hold on. OK, it would appear we're up to a flying start. Catherine. Now, you know, a few minutes ago I mentioned a lovely lady by the name of Catherine Finch. She actually made herself known, presence known a couple of days ago and I said, who's that? And she kept saying, Catherine. And I said, oh, Catherine. And then she said, Catherine Finch. Um, Sarah as I'm going to play this little bit of video now. If you've seen the video the footage, you've already seen this, but I'm going to play this again. During my little session on the Arboretum, um, I actually pressed play on this recorder and the name Sarah was quite prominent. Well, I thought I heard it at the time, but I wasn't sure until I actually checked it, but it was there. That didn't come from this itself. It actually came from the camera there, which was filming at the time. 
but even so, I actually heard Sarah with my ears above playing this back as you'll see in the footage now. I've been down the Ombudsman um, during the daytime, very difficult with the birds, just to say to Sarah, Sarah, I'd like to get to know you, I'd like to know about you, because she obviously wanted to be known and uh, had something to say. So Catherine's gone to fetch Sarah, I find most intriguing. If a young lady pops up and says, this is Sarah, um, that would be quite excellent as well. Also whilst down there, um, around the resting places, I actually asked the guys, could I actually see something on camera? Um, what I should have done then is panned around the cemetery area, the, the headstones, but I didn't because it was just on me and I was filming. And to me, I didn't really expect to see anything. Uh, it must have been three minutes later I looked up and I did see a child, or what looked like a child. It was certainly child height. It was around the age of, looks height-wise, about six years old. Um, Fantastically, what happened was after that, because I didn't actually film it, I needed some kind of uh, clarification of what I'd seen, not just for me, but for you guys as well. So I actually asked them to give me one clear reply just prior to leaving. I said, can you tell me what I've just seen? I am now going to go and leave you guys, and thank you for your time. Before I do, however, there is just one question that I would like you to answer, and answer clearly. What did I see moving among the headstones over there a few moments ago? Thank you. Pretty damn clear to me that's a ghost. Now, you can argue with me as much as you want, but when a spirit tells you that you've just seen a ghost, uh, hey, who the hell are we to argue with that? Let's, um, let's push it a little bit, because we do like to do that. Can anyone tell me the child that I believe to be a child and that you said was actually a ghost? When I say that, I don't know if that's actually meant ghost or spirit. It's a bit of a gray area of people's different interpretations. If that was a child, can you tell me how old that child was. Okay. Now, Catherine apparently had gone to fetch Sarah, so let's see if Sarah's yet here. Sarah? Hi, sweetheart, I heard you on the Arboretum. If you are now here, if you've now joined us, can you just say, to begin with, it's Sarah? Thank you. Do you know what? I'm always getting told off by these guys. Um, to go to bed, take a break. They are very protective of me and uh, 
extremely loving people. Okay, this is recording from, I've been burning candle at both ends really badly again um, for the last week. I'm probably averaging, well, no sleep really. Uh, this is why I look like crap, so I'm like crap probably, but hey ho, here we are. Um, right, I felt the energy, put the recorder on, and one of the guys said, So between them telling me to take a break and Becky telling me to go to bed, um, you know, it never ceases to uh, amaze me how in denial some skeptics are when you hear a voice that is clearly a voice, clearly within the range considered to be that associated with AVPs or EVPs as some people still call them. Um, you know, they keep going on that there's no scientific proof and everything else and it's getting really, really boring now. How much scientific proof do you want? It's here. You just come in uh, semi-scientists, like I said. The problem we've got is... <coughs> main problems actually. One is a, a scientist would be frowned on by quite a lot of his peers and fellow scientists etc if he was suddenly started saying you know what yeah the spirits are real and everything else because a lot of the scientific community do still frown on that and it is to a great extent a taboo subject. <coughs> The other problem we've got is sceptics in general. <coughs> I'm talking about many career sceptics here. If it is scientifically proven that and accepted that one voice, one sentence is deemed to be human speech and there can be no other alternative explanation other than my claim that it's a spirit and if it's a reply to a question just that one acknowledgement would cause problems um, if any sceptic just accepted that they would then be saying what you know what we was wrong about all these years we've been building our career going around meetings and things telling everybody that you know what we don't think there's any evidence, there's no scientific proof. And to be honest, they, they know they're quite safe because it's never likely to happen. It's already been scientifically proven. Um, Bargy, <coughs> on his uh, radio, these, these, were, these weren't just senses, these were bloody paragraphs that were coming through. Imperfectly, and perfectly clear spoken that everybody could hear. There was indirect reply, there was some massive massive comments coming out of that thing. The radio was working with no valves in it. It was put in a Faraday cage. It still continued to work. They tried to debunk him, they did this, they did that. They couldn't. The scientists at the time said, you know what? But what happened? Manu, are you there? Emily? Yes. yes. Hello, Manu. Thank you, Manu. After this, scientist Harry Oldfield, a colleague of the Skull Group, attempts further communication. We would like to ask the question of the appearance of your space. I can't really answer that. Can you tell something about Skull? Thank you. Will the work progress? Certainly. Thank you. Okay. This is what I need. 
was anything ever accepted as scientific proof that just the possibility of the afterlife could be real and here's evidence in support of that no it didn't I've said it before and I'll say it quite categorically again I'm right and the scientific community that are adverse to this and the sceptics that are adverse to this are all totally totally mistaken can one of you who's very clearly spoken approach me to comment on this for a second please it needs to be clear okay I've got somebody with me who's strong I'm presuming it is a gentleman, and let's hope he's going to be clear. It's going to look quite silly. <clears throat> okay, you know what, guys? Um, what I've just said about things not being accepted, and rather than people supporting your work, people that you'd expect taking interest or more interested in trying to discredit it, what do you think of that? Oh, this record has gone off. Um, Jonathan, Jonathan is quite well spoken. It's just not that one at more speed. I think that's Jonathan. I think that's Jonathan. It's Jonathan. Hi Jonathan and thank you. The question was, what do you think of that? That's just basic saying this is Jonathan, which is wonderful, but it's not what I was actually uh, had in mind. This is what I'm talking about. You're something more with us. That is so clear apart from I'm missing one word at the moment. Let's give that a play. There's no way that is anything but human speech. And to say there's no evidence of anything, that in itself, just that one reply, is evidence. If scientists cannot take that and establish that that's speech as opposed to just a sound, then we've not progressed very far in the last 200 years. You guys are forever asking me to join you and me being with you and everything. Why is that? Thank you. I also get questions like, Don, why don't you get a spirit box and things? Do you really think I need one, to be fair? Um, so, yeah. Brilliant. Can I ask you all about the... Uh, oh, that's strong. That's welcomed. Thank you. The time stream. Let me ask you a question. Are you speaking to me now? from the time stream. Just 
one right here. Not sure on that one. That's a lady. Let's push that again. We'll find out who that is in a second. Same record here. You know what, I can't get that any so clear, that's quite annoying. second guess it so we'll as if we'll work it out later. One day when I actually do I get the feeling I'm gonna have a lot of friends. During this session I heard a very loud, clear shout coming from outside my property. At the time I paid it little attention. Instead concentrating on what I was doing. I did actually wonder at the time who the hell is that at 3 a.m in the morning. It wasn't until playback during editing this footage, it became apparent that the voices outside were actually the spirits shouting very, very clearly, come and stay with us, as you are now about to hear. Um, guys, you know who I am, you know what I do. Um, it's not time yet for me to join you. This was taken on the operator as well, and it was uh, just when the birds was ready for tweeting, etc. This was one of them, or a couple of them, or a few of them, was talking about me joining them. And then in the video, there's one specific part when I said when I was on the operator, I heard something echo. When I got back and I checked this recording, which believe it or not, I didn't actually hear at the time. And this is what I found. Can you hear that? Showing us for your future, that was actually to me in relation to a question. I can't even remember what the question was now. Um, absolutely fantastic recording. Now, I'm not being funny, but Chris French or anybody else out there, do you really? expect the intelligent people that watch my videos to actually buy it that that's static 
that's audio gain or anything else. Obviously I cannot prove that was a spirit because I can't, I can only show you what I pictured, uh, sorry, what I picked up in direct reply to a question, but you must admit, regardless of anything else, it's not the sort of thing someone walking past is going to actually say, is it? It's showing us for your future or showing us all your future, whichever one that may be. So it's examples like that, that um, I, I just find it incredible when people turn and say there's no evidence. I have attracted my fair share of detractors. And as my friend said, when you actually put stuff out which contradicts what other people are trying to make you believe, then it makes you a target because you are a threat. Um, if your evidence is good, it threatens everything that they stand for. So they will do everything they can to discredit you and comment on you negatively any way they can, any time they can. That comes with the territory. But it's good to know that I'm having an effect, I'm actually gaining ground. The other thing I get a couple of wise cracks about, including one today on Facebook. Oh, you know, oh, Don, oh, I bet he's after a TV series. Um, not necessarily, but I wouldn't turn one down. Why would I? Would anybody out there really turn one down if one was offered? And why would I want a TV series? Well, let me tell you, there is two reasons, you know. First of all, to get my work out to a wider audience. Second of all, it would be it means that it would be scrutinised and probably tested correctly, scientifically. Although I'm not sure about that part, to be fair. And not that it amounts to anything. And thirdly, um, as anybody will tell you who's known me from day one, yeah, if something comes of, of what I do, me and the team and what we do, then fantastic. And if we earn a shitload of cash, absolutely fantastic. And I'll tell you why. My goal for many years and since starting this and even before I got the team together GSO when I was on my own is to help people and I don't mean necessarily spiritually money to me doesn't actually mean a great deal at all to be fair at all it's not it's something that I need to survive but it means nothing to me people mean a lot more so what would I do with a TV series? Mm. Well, if I was ever fortunate to get a TV series, first of all, everything that goes out would be 100% real, true, um, unlike some of them that's out there at the moment. But more to the point, that would enable me to put money into things like helping underprivileged children, vulnerable adults, terminally ill children, and children that need operations in other countries. That's what I would do if I was ever in a fortunate position to have excess funds. Most of that money, that's exactly where it would go. And everybody that knows me will tell you that from day one, that has always been my stance on this thing. So when people say, oh, I bet he wants a TV series, hell, why not? Okay, so now we've got that one nicely cleared up. I think it's time to move on. Sarah, can you, Try and talk a little bit slower and come even closer, please, because it is sometimes difficult to uh, to get through. Sarah, you're at the Arboretum. Are you part of any of the history of the Arboretum? Did you used to live in the Motive Manor house there or anything like that? I don't say I lived in Wigston. Can you 
try and talk a little bit slower and come even closer, please, because it is sometimes difficult to uh, to get through. Sarah, you at the Old Breton? Are you part of any of the history of the Old Breton? Did you used to live in the Motive Manor House there or anything like that? Tell me that looks like I lived in Wigston. Tell me that looks like I lived in Wigston. Tell me that looks like I lived in Wigston. These are getting a little bit difficult, but intriguing all the same. Becky, um, she can hear you, chicken. Can you tell me anything about Sarah? Where she comes from, or, or what did she used to do? I was a you can that actually Sarah believe it or not, she says I was a something. I used to really enjoy it. That's good, but we didn't get the first part, Sarah, so... Sarah, what did you used to enjoy? He was a teacher. Beautiful. Teacher phase off a little bit there, but uh, never mind.
this is a typical example whereby we get two different replies on two different recorders. I know exactly what Sarah used to do, and you will too now. She used to look after the babies. That's why it's two different replies. That's Sarah, and this is a gentleman telling us what Sarah did. So, so would you, would you like a, a nanny, a housekeeper, or was it your baby? Thank you. I'm just going to put the kettle on. I'll be back in a second. To those that... You know what, I'm going to be bothered anymore. At the end of the day, um, as I stated before, the spirit world is real, the afterlife is real, spirits are real, these are my friends. One of the guys says, now you... what was it? It has popped up in a couple of videos um, where once accidentally and a mention of it in the last one, um, which wasn't in English, but for reasons that I won't go into, the, the guys know, don't know me as Don Phillips, they know me as and call me somebody else generally. Um, if you had a message for mankind as a whole or some advice, what would that advice be? If you had a question for mankind as a whole, uh, sorry not a question, advice, planet or whatever you wish, what would your message be? Now's your opportunity to put it out to lots and lots of people. So try and be clear and make the most of it.
Okay. You also notice that when I'm talking to these wonderful spirit people, they are distinctly different to, and their sounds and their voices are totally, totally different to something negative or demonic as we've had in the workshop in the past. <coughs> Do you know, early guys, in fact, let me just play this footage. I need to ask you a question for our viewer says. You, mate, need a coffee, because you're flagging already. Yeah. Jet lag kicking in. Yeah, yeah I can tell. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> My God, I feel dizzy, mate. Sit down. That was very, very powerful. Not me for six. I didn't even know it was coming. I felt something just starting, and I just took the recorder out. I thought I want to get a good recording, and then instantly, bang, and about blew me out the door. What was happening there, Becky? Anybody? That spirit energy. But to be honest, um, it only for six, but that is the first time I'd felt that amount of power and uh, anything like that to me, spiritual, doesn't bother me. I wasn't bothered at the time, apart from it not me for six and my heart rate, my breathing and my eyes started stinging and but it was a unique with a capital U experience. I have experienced something like that before when I was with Tony and uh, when I was doing the <coughs> my presentation at the Pope Conference in Blackpool. We went up to uh, get a cup of had a few minutes before my spot. Went up to the top get a cup of tea, just got near the top of the stairs, bang, same again, not quite as strong as that, but it wasn't far off as Tony would tell you. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have a camera at the time, otherwise I wouldn't be able to, to actually show you. I it. Someone like me turns up one day and says, you know what, I speak to spirits, and I can get the answers to many, many unanswered questions. Do you think I've been taken seriously by certain people that you think will take me seriously? And do you think they've asked me to ask these guys anything that they could actually learn? No, instead, they just carry on peddling theories. So I was saying that the human consciousness resides outside of the human body. If that's correct, can you say yes, that's correct or something I can hear?